now is Oakland City Council member Noel Gallo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with talking about the A's. How big of a blow is this to the city of Oakland, not just from a revenue standpoint, but also for an image standpoint? Well, you know, I grew up in the city of Oakland. I've been an A's fan all my life. Went mm. to see them at the World Series. They won many pennant championship. As a matter of fact, I even went to high school with some of their ex-players. Wow. Uh, Daryl Stewart. I was in the same high school playing baseball and so forth. And and he's actually made an effort to buy uh, the A's and to or to buy a team to locate them to Oakland. So the reality is, is as a matter of fact, next week we're meeting with some legal counsel that has defended other cities from mm -hmm. St. Louis down the line, uh, whether it's football or, or baseball mm -hmm. action, antitrust and so forth. We're meeting with them to see if we can put together a challenge legally uh, and keep try to keep the A's here or or have the Major League Baseball commissioner keep his commitment that he would provide expansion teams to relocate to cities like Oakland. I mean, you look and at the Coliseum site, though, Mr. Gallo, the there's so much potential perfect there. Perfect site, 150 yeah. acres. Yeah. All city owned and county owned. As a matter of fact, the A's own half of it through the county right now. Mm -hmm. But they're under a legal suit, uh, the Surplus Land Act. And uh, so everything is there, you know, we got the airport, you got the BART, and the reality is what, what, what bothers me is the dishonesty within Fisher, and because the city, the citizens of Oakland have invested over $7 billion in transportation. Mm. They got the BART there, the airport, the highway, the bus, uh, to accommodate the Coliseum and the arena. And not only that, but they we also still owe like eighty million dollars through a bond when we brought them brought the teams back to rebuild the Coliseum. And so the reality is for me, it's um, we need to keep the A's in Oakland, and if not, give us an expansion team that we can continue to develop. And I know that Fisher makes an excuse about. You know, at the very beginning of all this discussion about Howard Terminal, he said it was going to be privately invested and built. But all of a sudden, down the middle of the road, no, we need taxpayers' dollars to continue to build it. And um, so anyways, next week we meet with attorneys that are professional in this business and to see if we come out of come up with a plan to go to court. All right, let's talk about the police chief. Yeah. Why do you think it's taken so long to name you know, a new chief of your police department. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Chief Armstrong. I mean, I've known him since uh, the early days in, uh, here in Oakland. And uh, certainly when I had issues in the Fruitvale area, he would come personally, not only to walk with me during the day at nighttime, and also assigned officers on a regular basis uh, to that area that's in need, from downtown to the Fruitvale area and so forth. And uh, I think he's the right choice. I know he's reapplied, but I see him coaching uh, basketball at Bishop O'Dow now. But uh, he's the right choice for Oakland. Do you have faith that the current administration is doing I, everything they can? You no, know, I the disagree city? with uh, what through the mayor's office they have done. Mm -hmm. And the monitor, we still have this uh, negotiated settlement agreement monitor that had a lot to do with the firing of uh, Chief Armstrong. And um, and we've what the city of Oakland has spent over twenty million dollars in twenty years having that monitor show up every three months mm. to tell you what's wrong with the police department and makes a million a year. Come on. So I think that Oakland right now, when it comes to public safety in any city, in any county, in any state or federal government, it's the number one priority. And what Oakland has slack is the cooperation from the county, from the state, and from the federal government. You're, we're starting to finally see that. I grew up in Oakland with challenges. And, you know, if I didn't have it, it was all right for me to steal it. And right now, there's an attitude, that attitude of young people that are under the age of 24, 18 years of age, committing a lot of the crimes because there's no pushback. And so what I'm glad to see last week, now the, the U.S. Marshals have returned, dealing with prostitution and human trafficking. I have the FBI on the street, and finally the highway patrol is becoming more visible because a lot of our streets are state highways mm -hmm. like they used to be, and uh, the cooperation of the sheriff department. And, you know, going through an experience here in Oakland, what, what helped it was crime. Well, we used to have a curfew. If I was under 18 in a while, you had to be in home by 10 o'clock. Right. Because you got to get to school. And, so, and we also had a gang injunction. 
that deal with those that are involved in gangs. And, uh, but, you know, we've had a, a leadership uh, from the council that hasn't supported mm -hmm. more police officers like we used to have with 780. Now we're at 700 almost. Lots and, of issues, yeah. but no doubt. Yeah, Some so solutions. that's been a challenge. We need more officers on the street. Uh, not only more officers, yeah. but I like to bring the National Guard, as other cities have done, when they're in an emergency. And we certainly have an emergency here in Oakland. City Councilman yeah. Noel Gallo, thank you so much thank for you. joining us.